Drifting is one of the most fundamental tools to becoming a successful racer in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. In fact, drifting is such a powerful technique that on certain courses, it can take some of the slowest builds in the game and turn them into some of the fastest. In this video, I'm going to take you step by step from the very basics of learning how to even start a drift, all the way through advanced techniques that are used in world record speedruns and time trials. Welcome to everything you need to know about drifting in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. This video is going to be broken up into three parts. Part 1 is going to describe the very basics of drifting, including how to start a drift, the basics of mini turbos, and the difference between inward and outward drifting vehicles. Part 2 is going to describe mini turbos, and in particular, the mini turbo stat in much more detail. In part 3, I'm going to describe some advanced drifting techniques including how to optimize your drifts, mid-air mini turbo charging, and glider strats. One more thing before I get started. Normally I'd save this for the end of the video, but it took quite a bit of time and effort to put this video together, so if you enjoyed the content or found it helpful or useful, I'd really appreciate it if you dropped a like and shared the video with others who might benefit as well. Also, follow me on Twitch, at twitchtv.basic, where I do speedruns of this game on 200cc, as well as races with viewers. I'm really big on chat interaction, so if you have specific questions about how certain strats work and you happen to catch me streaming, I'm more than happy to answer in real time. With all that out of the way, let's get started. You can't be a successful racer online if you don't learn how to drift properly. Fortunately, getting started is actually pretty easy. While you're driving forward, press and hold the ZR button. Your character will execute a little hop. If you're holding left or right on the joystick while you do this, then when your character lands on the ground, you'll start doing a little power slide, or drift. When you let go of ZR, your character will stop drifting. Congratulations! You've executed your first successful drift in Mario Kart 8. Couple things to note about drifting. You can actually control the angle of your drift by moving the joystick while you're drifting. Tilting the joystick in the direction of the turn will make your drift angle much tighter, and tilting the joystick in the direction opposite your turn will make the angle much wider. Taking your thumb completely off the joystick while you're drifting will result in what's called a neutral drift, which is gonna result in an angle that's not as tight as the tight drift, but not as wide as the wide drift. On some courses, there are turns that are so tight that even tight drifts aren't going to be enough to let you navigate them properly. On these turns, there's another kind of drift called a brake drift, where you actually hold the gas, brake, and drift buttons all at the same time. This is more of an advanced technique that we're going to cover a little bit later on in the video. It's important to point out that in terms of drifting, there are two distinct classes of vehicle in this game. Inward drifting vehicles and outward drifting vehicles. Inward drifting vehicles are all sports bikes and include the Comet, Sport Bike, Jet Bike, Yoshi Bike, and Master Cycle. These bikes all have a special icon next to their name to indicate that they are inward drifters, just in case you ever forget. All the other vehicles in the game are outward drifting. The main differences between these two types of vehicles are when and how you take the drifts. In general, when you use outward drifting vehicles, you want to try and start your drift as early as you can without hitting walls or off-road. This allows you to build up mini turbos for longer, as well as navigate turns with a little bit more control. With some exceptions, you also want to try and make sure to hit turns with outward drifting vehicles as close to the inside of the turn as possible. This helps you take advantage of the tight turn radius that you get when executing a drift with these kinds of vehicles. With inward drifting bikes, they aren't true drifters in the sense that your wheels are never actually dragging against the ground. Instead, they do what's called committing to the turn. While drifting, what's actually going on is that they have a really tight initial cut, but overall the turn radius is much wider than outward drifting vehicles while executing a drift. Therefore, if you're using an inward drifting vehicle, you're going to want to start your drifts a little bit later and a little bit further to the outside. In Mario Kart 8, outward drifting vehicles are almost always going to be faster than inward drifting vehicles. Now, you may have noticed in some of these examples that during a drift, different colored sparks started coming out of my tires, and that when I released the drift, I got a little boost. These are called mini turbos. There are three levels of mini turbo. Mini turbo, or MT, which is indicated by blue sparks. Super mini turbo, or SMT, which is indicated by orange sparks. And ultra mini turbo, or UMT, which is indicated by magenta sparks. And yes, I said magenta, it's in between pink and purple, so it really should satisfy everyone, but I know how the internet works, and it's really going to have the exact opposite effect, but whatever, I don't care, don't at me. Higher levels of MT are both faster and last longer. And mastering mini turbos is hands down the most important skill in the game. 
so much so that we're going to dedicate an entire section of this video to explaining exactly how it works. In this part of the video, I'm going to go over exactly how charging mini turbos works, and I'm also going to cover the mini turbo stat, which is a hidden stat that doesn't actually show up on the build screen. There's a lot of detail here that I happen to find really cool, but strictly speaking, it's not really necessary to know any of it if you're purely interested in improving your gameplay. So skip ahead to this time in the video if you want to get straight into the advanced drifting tech. Now with that little disclaimer out of the way, let's go under the hood and talk about what exactly is happening during a drift. When you start a drift, the game starts a counter with an initial value of zero. Every frame, this counter increases depending on the angle of your joystick. If you think of your joystick as a clock face, then holding the joystick anywhere between about 2 and 3 for right drifts, or about 9 and 10 for left drifts, increases the counter by 5 every frame. Anywhere else, including holding the joystick in neutral, will increase the counter by 1 every frame. If we look at the Mario Wiki, we can see that there are three different thresholds listed under the Mini Turbo Statistics table. MT Threshold, SMT Threshold, and UMT Threshold. Perhaps unsurprisingly, these values indicate how high the counter needs to get before the next level of Mini Turbo gets charged. The number at the far left is called the level for the MT stat. I mentioned this in my coin video, but basically the way this works is that each component of your build, that is the character, cart, tires, and glider, has its own distribution of stats. If we choose an all gold loadout, that is gold Mario, gold standard cart, gold tires, and gold glider, and add up all the mini turbo values indicated by the MT column here, we'll get a value of 5. This means that the all gold loadout has a level of 5 for mini turbo. Now, if we go back to the mini turbo table and just look at the row corresponding to a level of 5, we can see that the MT threshold is 272, the SMT threshold is 574, and the UMT threshold is 876. So to build up an ultra mini turbo with the all gold loadout, if we use slower charging angles for the whole drift, it would take us a full 14.6 seconds to charge up a UMT. If we use the faster charging angle for the whole drift, we can cut the time down by a factor of 5 to get 2.92 seconds. Higher mini turbo stats will allow you to both charge up MTs faster and keep the boosts for longer. The lowest MT builds take about 3 seconds to build up UMTs using the fast charging angles, and the highest MT builds take about 2.2 seconds. It might not sound like much of a difference, but trust me when I say that playing at a high level, it's super noticeable. So at this point, we've learned how to drift, and we've learned about the nuts and bolts of how to charge mini turbos quickly. The rest of this video is going to be dedicated to teaching you how to drift as efficiently as possible. This is going to be more of a rapid fire tips and tricks kind of section, so buckle up because here we go. Number 1. Neutral Drifting this refers to keeping your joystick completely neutral when drifting. Tilting your joystick during a drift is actually slower than having your joystick completely neutral, and the tighter your angle, the slower your cart is actually moving. This means that there are certain circumstances where it's actually faster not to build up the next level of mini turbo, and instead neutral drift for most or even all of the turn. Note that this is only true for 200cc. Some examples of this include the long turn on water park, and the turn right after the shortcut on Toad Harbor. Number 2. Soft Drifting This is arguably the most important skill in the entire game, and once you learn how to do it, it will completely change up your gameplay. Suppose that you're coming up on a decently shallow turn like the one shown here. You're going to want to charge up a UMT as quickly as possible, so what do you do? Well, the way most people would approach this situation is to do a hard right turn to get that fast charging angle, and then, when they're about to hit the wall or off-road, tilt the joystick hard left. They then repeat this procedure over and over again in a so-called wiggle drifting pattern until they get their desired level of mini turbo. Once they get that, they release and take the boost. This is actually super slow for a couple of reasons. First of all, like we talked about before, tilting the joystick during a drift is just generally slower. But also, your cart will be spending more time in the tighter angle, which is the slowest way that you can actually go while drifting. The other reason is that you spend a bunch of time charging MTs using the slow charging angle, and so it turns out that it actually takes you longer to build up mini turbos this way. So what do you do? Well, remember how I said that the fast charging angles are generally between 2 and 3, or 9 and 10, depending on what direction you're drifting? Well, 
holding the joystick at exactly 2 or 10 will allow you to maintain a constant drifting angle around the more shallow turns while still being able to charge up the MTs using the fast charging angle. Now, learning this is much easier said than done, and the way that I figured it out is by loading up Sweet Sweet Canyon on 200cc with a try-hard meta build of Waluigi, Bitty Buggy, Rollers, and Cloud Glider. Once you do this, drive up until you get to the pink section, and once you get to the first right turn there, you should be able to keep a constant drifting angle around the whole thing and still be able to build up an SMT. Now look, I know this sounds complicated, but the basic story is that you really want to try and eliminate wiggle drifting from your gameplay as much as possible in favor of keeping constant drift angles. Try and keep that angle as close to 10 and 2 as possible, and I guarantee that your drift play will improve dramatically. Number 3. Brake Drifting Like the name implies, brake drifting is exactly the same as regular drifting, except that you also hold down the brake button while you're drifting. This is a technique that's basically never required on 150cc unless you're going for top times in time trials such as on Rainbow Road. But there are many instances on 200cc where it's literally impossible to stay on the track or even take a halfway decent line without brake drifting. There are way too many examples to list them all, but some of the more notable cases include coming out of the glider on Dry Dry Desert, the hairpin turns on Neo Bowser City, and, well, pretty much all of Rainbow Road. If you master brake drifting, I guarantee that you're going to demolish 90% or more of your competition on 200cc. Number 4. Mid-Air Mini Turbo Charging This isn't super common, but in the situations where it's applicable, it's actually very helpful. Basically, if you drift off of a ramp, your momentum is conserved. That is, your direction won't actually change while you're in mid-air. But, if you keep holding down the ZR button after you go off the ramp, the mini turbo charge counter will still increase like normal, with all of the fast and slow charging angle tech still in play. So what you can actually do is wait until your cart is fully in the air, and then start holding hard right or hard left on the joystick, and this will cause you to keep building up mini turbos in mid-air. On 200cc this shows up in courses like Water Park, Rainbow Road, and dry dry desert. And on 150cc, it shows up at the start of lap 2 on Mount Wario. Just to name a few examples. Alright, that's going to be it for me guys. Once again, if you found the video interesting or informative, it would be really cool if you could drop a like and share this video with others. If you've got any other topics you'd like me to cover, or if there's anything you feel I missed, please let me know down in the comments because I'd love to hear from you. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.